What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today we are going to be changing the oil on my Suburban. Now, I am cheating uh, because normally I do this stuff on the ground, but I thought, man, I bought this lift, I need to use it for oil changes. I've only changed, this will be the third thing that I've changed oil on, and the first thing in the shop. And uh, I know, man, this thing looks massive on that lift, but this is a 9,000 pound lift. So no uh, issues of putting it on the lift, but if you guys are doing this in your driveway, the procedure will be pretty much the same. And if yours isn't lowered, um, obviously you'll probably be able to get under it without any kind of lift or whatever. But if not, you can jack it up. I'll show you where we're gonna jack, or where you would jack it up and probably support it with jack stands when I get under there for those people that are doing it on the ground. But we are going to be using the lift today. And um, I don't have it up very high just because I like to work in my little chair. So I'll list all this stuff in the description down below. We are going to be using Mobile One 5W30. I'm using a Wix filter, that is my preference. Those two brands, I will list those if you guys like those. Um, that's just my preferred brand of oil and filter. Uh, other things you're gonna need, I've got not only my light here, which this thing is pretty amazing. If you pull it out and it's got a magnet and a hook on it, and um, other than that, you're gonna need a 15 millimeter. And I like to use a filter wrench it, because you never know, this will be the first time I've changed the oil on this thing. So I have no, well, maybe it's a second, but I don't have any idea how tight the filter is. This just makes it a little easier when your hands are greasy. Also got gloves, I've got some paper towels, and then obviously you need something to drain your oil in. So that's what I've got here. This is actually meant for the lift. So um, if you don't, you need some kind of drain pan. So let's get under this thing and get started. I'll try to set up some lights and this camera on a tripod and I'll show you how I do this. So first of all, let's start if you're not doing this on a lift. So if you're doing this in your driveway, there's two places where I like to lift. So if you can get to this back cross member, I like that one the best because the front cross member has a piece of plastic to protect like the front side of the engine. Uh, just to keep splashes down like a splash shield. You can get on that, but you just don't have as much. So if you're lifting, you can lift from there. If your jack's long enough, come here. And then I like to support it by the frame. So right behind me here, put a jack stand on the frame. Now, just so you guys know, um, it's kind of, it would be beneficial to have it leaning more towards the passenger side. So if you could lift and maybe put your jack stand a little higher on the passenger side, or on the driver's side than you do the passenger side. Um, you can see our drain plug right here and it just makes draining quite a bit easier because you can see it comes out that way. So now the pan has a spot in it, but it just helps things go a little quicker. So once we, uh, once you get it off the ground, I may hit the camera here. We need a 15 millimeter to loosen this up. And I, guys, I don't remember if I changed this already. I probably did. Holy cow, that's tight. There we go. I probably didn't need to put that in there so quickly, but... And this is going to probably squirt out everywhere. Hopefully it doesn't go on the face of the camera. And this is why you need towels. So we're trying not to drop this. And I'm gonna use a towel to clean this up a little bit. I'm pretty sure I did change it before, but I don't remember. I don't think I did a video on it. So we're gonna let that drain. The, the truck's kind of warm and I like to change it when it's warm because it comes out quicker. If you're trying, kind of doing this in a, trying to do this in a hurry, uh, it just makes things a little easier because the oil's nice and warm. And um, the other thing you wanna check once you clean this off is make sure that this gasket here that seals up against the pan is good and mine is still looking good. So we're gonna reuse this. If it's not, guys, if it's crushed down, I'll list in the description a new plug or if you have a newer version that has a removable seal, you can just replace the seal. But we are good on this, so I'm gonna be putting it back in. Once this drains, we'll move over to the filter. While it's still draining on the passenger side, we're gonna come over to the driver's side, which is directly over from where they pulled the plug out. And you have the filter itself. So I've got my filter wrench on here, and here's where it's gonna get messy. 
That was pretty snug. I generally don't use this to put it back on unless my hands are like really greasy, but you don't want to over tighten this. We're going to scoot this over just a little bit. And I'm going to let that drain out just a little bit before I go ahead and twist it the rest of the way off. Unfortunately, this part is inevitable. You're going to get oil on you. But if you let it drain for a little bit, you get a little less on you. Now you don't want to drop this because if you do, you're going to have a huge mess. And now that I say that, I'm probably going to drop it. So slippery. But once it's loose, I really don't like using my wrench anymore because then you have oil all over your wrench. About to get it. There we go. This is why you need towels. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let that drain for a little bit longer until it's not dripping quite as much. And then we'll go back on with the new filter. But before we do that, I'm going to show you something that I generally do. Once it's drained, for the most part, I take some brake clean on a rag and just clean this mess up that we've made. I mean, you don't have to do this, but I do like to clean the seating surface for the uh, filter here just to make sure that it's clean. Now, you're, it's still going to drip some out. That's not a huge deal. I just want to get the majority of this nastiness off of here. And you can go really crazy if you want and clean it really well. That looks pretty good. So, let's look at what I'm going to do next. So grab your filter. I'm going to move the camera a little bit so I can show you what I'm talking about. So we've got our new filter here. And what I like to do, especially when these mount like this, I like to fill these up with oil. And the reason I like to do that is so you're not getting a completely dry start. Um, don't overfill it. We're going to look and make sure that we don't put too much in it, but we want to get it as full as we can. And this has little channels in it so you can move it back and forth. This, like I said, you don't have to do this. It's just, in my opinion, it keeps it from dry starting. The other thing is we're going to take some of this oil that's on top here and we're going to use it to put on this little rubber ring. And now we're ready to go back in place with the new filter. So we're going to take our filter and we're going to put it on and get it snug by hand. Now, as you can see, my gloves have oil on them. So I'm probably going to use my filter wrench to tighten it up, but you don't want to go crazy here. The other thing you want to make sure of is when I clean that surface uh, where the old filter was at, you need to make sure that your old rubber ring came off because if it didn't uh, you're gonna have two and you could potentially have a leak or um, the filter could fail now I've never had one fail and I've seen them doubled up but they will leak for the most part if you have that so I'm gonna grab my filter wrench and we're just gonna snug this down like I said we're not going crazy I'm just gonna get it snug as snug as I could normally get it by hand if my hands weren't greasy and that should be good. So now we're gonna move over and we're gonna put the oil plug back in. At this point, assuming your gasket's good, uh, if not, make sure you replace it here, this rubber uh, seal. But we're ready to put this back into place. Now, um, you can get real crazy here, guys. Same thing as I said on the filter. You don't wanna over tighten. The technical specs on this truck are um, and for basically any 5.3 for the most part is you have 18 foot pounds is what this is supposed to go to so your drain plug and then 22 foot pounds on the oil filter so they're not real tight and you risk screwing the threads up in the pan which is a nightmare if you strip those so don't do that the other thing is if you have a magnetic uh, plug 
don't worry about if there's stuff on the end of it, uh, unless it's just crazy amounts uh, and, and it's gonna look worse than what it is. A lot of these have a magnetic plug and they're gonna pick up stuff. Uh, I don't care how many miles it has on it. Now this thing just hit 200,000 miles, but uh, the oil was dirty, but everything looked good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. I am not going to torque it, even though 18 foot pounds is what it can go to. Um, I'm just gonna snug it up by hand. Once you get it tightened down, I like to take a rag and wipe off around it just so it doesn't drip anything on my floor. And then any areas that might have gotten oil on them. I mean, I could spend all day, you guys know how I am OCD wise, I could clean this thing forever. But uh, at this point, we're ready to set this thing down and we'll get up top and put some oil in it. Once you've got it down, and I like to get it on level surface, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull the dipstick out just a hair. And I forgot to tell you guys, you're gonna need a funnel, unless you're just amazing at pouring, which I am not. And we're gonna go ahead, it's supposed to take six quarts with a filter change. However, a lot of times you don't get it all out. And so what I like to do is I'm gonna start with five, we're gonna check it, and then we'll start it up and check it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of this in here, because this is a five quart container. And just take your time here, make sure it's inevitable that you spill some um, almost every time. If you take your time, you won't, but. And I like to have at least two rags. And the reason I have two is I have one for checking the oil and the other one to put underneath this funnel and kind of tuck somewhere so um, it's not dripping everywhere until I'm finished with it. Now that we've got that in there, give it a little bit of time to drain down into the pan. And a lot of times you get a false reading until you actually start it. It's showing probably about maybe half a quart low. So it's pretty close. Because like I said, if you consider the fact that you generally don't get all of the oil out, uh, unless you've really got it on an angle where it's really hot, um, generally it doesn't take the six that it says that it's going to. So at this point, let's grab this. And this is what I'm talking about. I kind of set it in there like that so it has something to drip into. We'll go ahead and put the plug back in, or the cap back on, and we'll go start it. Now that we've started it, um, generally that's the point where that filter has to fill up. So we're, we're not having to worry about that dry being dry started for so long. It's still going to have a period to where it's dry, but let's see where we're at now. I know these curly ones like this are easier to push in and out, but man, they're a pain to read sometimes. And it looks like we're still about a half a quart low. So I'm going to go ahead, pour another half quart in it, and um, then we'll jump in and I'm going to show you guys how to reset the oil life monitor. Pretty simple. Once you get it topped off with oil, it actually ended up taking uh, six quarts. So uh, I always buy two five quart containers, but let's see if we can reset this gauge. Let's see if I can get this down with my knee. So you're going to turn the key on. We'll turn the air off so we're not listening to the blower. So we're going to go to information and you just saw it. I passed it. Oil life remaining zero. So over here, we went to the information, the little I with the car, and we're gonna hold down the check mark on zero until it resets. And that's it. Look at this, 201,000 miles. This thing is doing absolutely amazing. So at this point, that is it. It's a pretty simple process. I will tell you guys, it is a tight fit. Look at the Look at the front tires on my lift, and I had to fold the mirrors down to clear the post here. So uh, yeah, this lift really isn't, uh, I mean, what I would call design for something like this as far as size, but it does fit on it as far as um, 
length. And I did have this in my upstairs garage at one point. So if you guys ever think about uh, getting a lift for your garage, it will fit. And I made a video on that as well with the measurements and stuff. And I'll list this a uh, link to what lift I have. Uh, it's a bin pack. I absolutely love the thing. Uh, I'll list it in the description down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it. Um, it's not like working on the Trans Am. It's not like adding any performance parts, but it's something that you have to do from time to time. And I wanted to make a good how-to video on how I change the oil in most of my stuff. I've got to do my wife's RS7 very soon, so I'll probably make a video on that as well. But if you guys did enjoy this video, like always, please smash that thumbs up button. Um, I will list all the products that I use down in the description of the video, the video description down below. Uh, if you're not subscribed, guys, go down there, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we'll work on next.